Hey there viewers, welcome back to another episode of VGAPR Garage. Today we're working on the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Where? Where are you? There you are. You don't belong here. So in this video, we're going to be replacing the sending unit, the O-ring, and the locking ring. We really only need to be replacing the fuel tank O-ring because that's what's causing me to have an EVAP leak. But this vehicle has 180 something thousand miles on it. So we're just going to go ahead and do the whole thing. Uh, here is the Bausch part number. The problem with this is it doesn't come with a fuel strainer. Good luck finding a fuel strainer. I couldn't find one. Not from the dealer, it's discontinued. I ordered it, um, and then they canceled the order because they didn't have it. Um, so here's the locking ring. This is directly from Mopar. We've got our part number. Now, if you've come to this video and you don't need to replace your fuel tank um, sending unit, but you need to replace your rear control arms, this will help you because if you need to replace your rear control arms on your driver's side, you have to drop your fuel tank. Um, this video isn't going to be too much in depth because it is a rather rather tight space. I have my Jeep on blocks all the way around except for this wheel that I have on a jack stand because um, there's a bolt you need to get to that's easier with this wheel off. Um, there are going to be six bolts that hold the tank in. You're going to have one up in the wheel well, you're going to have two down here, and then you're going to have three like up near the drive shaft. I'll get in there and show you. You're going to have your fuel filler neck connector that goes into your tank, your um, EVAP canister line also goes to your tank. You're going to have your electrical connection. And then you're going to have your fuel lines in the back. Um, you should run your vehicle with the fuel pump off. Run all the gas out. I didn't. A little bit of gas is going to spray. Whoop diddly, I'm going to be fine. Fine. Um, if you live in the salt belt, this job's going to suck. Um, got to be honest with you guys, yesterday I undid all the bolts. Um, there, I believe there are 17 millimeter that hold all six bolts that hold the tank in. On mine, after 15 years of the salt belt, they turned into 17.5s. So I was using 18 millimeter to get them off. I did have to heat these three bolts up here, right at facing the outside of the vehicle, to be able to get them loose. The three up on the inside because they are almost a foot higher up in the vehicle those ones just came out they did have really they still the ends of them were still relatively rusted but they weren't stuck like the three out here um, I do have a trail rated version of the Jeep um, so that means that my I have a skid plate on mine and it doesn't look too good um, I may have to do some welding hopefully you don't because a new one costs about 250 bucks um, if I have to, I'll just rip it off, the skid plate off, and weld on a, what'll work as a skid plate. Um, but let's go ahead and get underneath there, and let's do, undo all the lines, and then we'll um, get going. So, we are in the rear driver's side wheel well, and we are looking at the fuel filler neck. Um, let's see if we can, so if you look right there, of course the laser can't pick up because of the light, that's the fuel filler neck. Right there, that's just got a regular uh, clamp on it. We're gonna undo that one. And then, if we go back up in here, if you look at that white connector, actually I think there's two. So there's, you've got that connector right up there, and then you've got the white connector. Those have to be removed. Both of them have to be removed as well. Um, if you wanted to, you could just undo, actually I think we're gonna do it there. We're gonna undo that. Um, fuel neck filler right there, that white line right there, and then that line, focus, that line right there. 
and that is the back side of the tank. Um, it's kind of hard to show because the tire's in the way. Um, if you look at my video on how to replace the fuel filler neck, that'll show um, how those lines go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and then we'll get to the front side of the tank. So on the front side of the tank, you're gonna have this EVAP connection, which you're just gonna wanna push the connector out of the top. Mine's broken, so I'm gonna have to order one. That could have been where my EVAP leak was coming from the entire time. Either way, I have two sides to it. This line right here, you're gonna wanna use one of these fuel line to push it free. And I would highly recommend that you run your vehicle till the gas is out by pulling the fuel pump relay or fuse. Um, because I was stupid and didn't got a bit of a shower, which is fine. It's more less gas in the vehicle. So, but now the next thing is, which I'm not really going to be able to show you too well. So I'm going to show you underneath. We have our fuel tank bolts. We've got one up there behind the drive shaft. I'm hoping I can get a wrench way up in here rather than having to remove the drive shaft again. We've got uh, one right up there. And then we've got one hidden behind these fuel brake, or not fuel brake, but um, parking brake cables. Now, the ones on the outside, let's go ahead and head out there. We've got one up there, we've got one here, and then we've got one there. I am going to use a jack to suspend and hold this. We will have an electrical connection we'll have to get uh, once the tank once the tank is down far enough. Let's get in here. Once the tank is down far enough, it's kind of hard to see, but the fuel sending unit is deep in there, but I'll show you when we get there. So this tank, right now the car says that it's empty. You know, I have 11 miles left, which is nothing. Um, it doesn't feel that heavy, um, which is good. I am worried that I am hitting the differential, or not the differential, but the rear axle. Oh God, I can't speak. That I'm hitting the um, the drive shaft. I'm hoping I can work my way around that. I really don't want to remove the drive shaft again. So let's go over, let's actually get some better light. So, this was simply removed with a, uh, this was just a worm gear. We had a little connection that you can just push up right here and it'll release. Same thing with this one, it may not seem like it because it doesn't look the same as this. It looks like you have to use a, what do you call it, a line removal tool. Nope, there's a, you'll clean it off and you can see a little tab that you just push. Now, luckily on my Jeep, there's a connection right on the frame underside, like a, this is like a butt kind of, a, what do you call it, an extension. So I was able to do it that way rather than having to lower it down. On the body wire harness, you do have a connector like this with the red, so you're going to need to, I had to clean mine up a lot before I even saw it. So you're gonna need to take it. So one of the first things we have to do is we have got to clean this up. We do not want any dirt. Even though there's almost no gas in here, we do not want any dirt getting in the tank.
Unfortunately, like an idiot, I wasn't recording on accident, but I took the tank out of the uh, holder. All in here wasn't packed with dirt so much they had to keep airing it out to be able to lift the tank out. This has to be cleaned out. I'm going to paint it. This isn't, this sucks. Then there's this piece right here that goes right here that broke off. That's gonna have to be welded back on. Um, this thing's in pretty bad shape. Um, but let's go ahead and get back to the tank. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm trying to give this tank the hooks on the tank the best chance of you know coming off. I don't want to break it. The ring's gonna break, that's fine. But let's go. We want to remove this pigtail to make it easier to clean up. So you pop out the red clip, push down the tab, you push down the tab. Uh, I'm not surprised, you know, all these years of it being on that. There we go. That's, there's dirt literally inside that. So we're going to make sure that that gets cleaned up real well. You push this tab in and it should should go get some rubber gloves push the tab in but something tells me it's probably full of dirt push it in this side it's giving up a bit of a fight there we go it's a little bit freer push in and it's supposed to come off You know what might help? Let's spray on in there. Push in. Boy, is it fighting. The other option is to literally just, is it broke? Yep, that's the problem, is it's broke. We've got one side here that uh, wants to come out, and then we have the other side. That is a bummer. We're definitely gonna have to go to the auto parts store and see if they carry these. I cannot, I have two broken ones on this thing, and I can't handle that with my really bad OCD. It just ain't gonna work. <sighs> Clean this off again. This one up and out of the way. go this way with it. A lot of it. Let's give these a little jar. Get 
just to try to break some of that rust free. Let's go back the other way. You know, like that one. Well, it looks like it's definitely moving. Let's go ahead and some of this. How are you guys in view? Okay, this... This ring does not want to move. Oh no, it's definitely coming. Can you guys still see I'm hammering so much it's moving? But the ring has started to move, that's good. There we go, it broke free. This ring is no good. Oh my God. Wow, holy shit. Excuse my French, I gotta beep that out. My fuel sending unit, I am so glad I ordered it. I'll show you guys in a second, I need to take a picture of this is broken. Wow. Wow. So this is my fuel sending unit. It is destroyed. So that's why I've had an evap leak. So, as you can see, this is uh, really bad. <laughs> um, and we don't want fuel, or we don't want this rust going into um, this tank. So we're gonna vacuum some of this out.
Okay. So now we just we really want to make sure that as much of this stuff does not go inside the tank. We can fish it out, so. But I'm gonna pull the tank sailing unit out. And right there is where the where that is. Try to pour it back in there. Yeah, this tank is, wow, I don't have any gas left in this thing. Oop. The other thing that's interesting is this does not have a strainer on the bottom. Let's check down inside. I grab my light, but there's no strainer on the bottom of that. So I guess it's good that I didn't get the strainer. You know what, I'm gonna pour this gasoline out and I'm gonna clean the inside of this tank. All right, let's, we wanna. We have our O-ring and our setting unit, but I want to protect that, that O-ring. I've got some silicone paste here, and I'm just going to run that over the O-ring. Right, we're gonna set that right there. Get my hands off. Now, we've got our new setting unit and we're gonna slide that this thing right here into its spot. Right there. I got a little bit of grease on that connector right there. Well, that's an issue, but I don't want it. All right. So now, we're gonna, the weird thing is, is the, uh, I guess it's fine. The other units, yeah, it's okay. How the other units float was is a little different. Put that in, and then we see an arrow, or I see an arrow right there, and there's an arrow there. You want those two lined up, and then let's go grab our locking ring. Tripping over everything, aren't I? Push the tank down. Just like 
securing into place. And then, of course, I put the hammer and everything away. One second. So we're going to give the new ring some taps to get it into place. Huh, it's been up a fight, ain't it? Yes, it is. Ow. Almost. Almost there. There we go. Well, maybe a little bit more. All right, so as you can see, those little lines in the fuel ring are lined up with the bevels and the holder. Now, we want this to last. So, we got our friend the fluid film, and we're gonna be liberal. I think that's liberal enough. So now, these little connectors are what broke on mine. I lost two of them. Not a big fan of Dorman, but they're the only ones who I could find locally that had them. And with how much broke, um, it's a good. It was a good idea for me to just to get some more. Now we're gonna <laughs> go through my mess, pull that off, and I took this line off. This line had one that broke. Open this up. And take one out. Well, just enough. And put it in there. Like so. Oops, got a little turned around in there. A little difficult to get these in. I thought it'd be a little easier. I'm gonna push them out towards the sides. Maybe if once we push this on here, yeah, we'll go out. There we go. And we're just gonna put this back in its home. So that's in. I'm super happy about that. The other side has a good one. And then we also have a broken one ah, down here. So as you can see down here we have one that's broken too. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. And take one of the new ones and pop that in there. And I do have one on the under on the underside um, that's broke. Or actually, this this may be the one that was broken. This may be the only ones. Um, so yeah, I don't think I have one didn't break up there. So I think we're good to basically drop this back in. Oh, we have our electrical connection. This bad boy right here. Um, we're gonna clean. Actually, these don't have too much dirt in them, so I think we're going to be good. Um, we're going to go ahead and put those back in. I might put some stuff on it, some fluid film, to make sure we don't have an issue again. And uh, go from there. Alright, 
right, so now we're gonna replace our, the lower control arm. Now, this bolt goes that way, which explains why the gas, has, the gas tank has to be removed. Now, this bolt is not going to come out easily because the end is gone. It's corroded. I am going to order a new one because I obviously will be putting a new tank holder in. So when I do that, I'll replace the bolt. But I'm just going to go behind here and grab on to that bolt and undo it. None of them, huh? None of them. It does help to heat these bolts up because they are definitely on there. And this bolt's a 21. Like I said, I'm just going to be holding on to it with this from the back. That's about enough to hold it. Sorry about my head being in the way. Where are you? You're right there. That's not it. We really got to get a good hold on this bolt. Ah, that's what's gonna. See, it's just going around and around and around. Let me see what I can do. All right, for the back side of this bolt, I went under, cleaned it with a wire wheel on a die grinder, and I was able to get it to hold a 17 millimeter. There really is not much to it. There really is not much. It's actually scary how little there is. It just doesn't, is this a 17? Yeah, it is a 17. I. Uh, one second. Okay, so the vice grips on the back of the bolt and heating this bolt up a lot. I was able to break it free. It's super hot. Come here. Come here. There we go. And I do have the weight of the vehicle rather the axle just being on the jack stand I have a jack over here um, because in case this does the axle does move out I want the weight of the vehicle to be on something so we're gonna tap this bad boy out So as you can see, maybe you can see, let's get you guys in there. That's kind of the problem with the head. There isn't really too much to it. It's kind of the problem. So now that's a little bit more free. Piece of crap lower control arm. And let's move you guys. So now we're gonna get the rear facing bolt and nut. The nut is a 21, the bolt is an 18. And there we go. And now this thing. Pop it, pop, pop, pop. comes out of the front side first, then you slide it out of the back. Actually, yeah, this, these were destroyed. All right. So now, let's grab the new one. 
What we're gonna do is on both sides, we're gonna put it in this side first because you need to put it in this side. But we're gonna spray it down with that. We're doing the same thing with the other side. All right. Now, the way it came out was the bearing lip here. So you're gonna wanna do it the same way. And we're gonna shove you up in there like so. There we go. I am gonna take the time now to clean the bolts off. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna take the bolt, try to find the hole on the back. There we go. And then we got our bolt. We are not gonna tighten these down yet um, until, it is sitting at right height, but we gotta obviously put the front side in before we actually, you know, fully tighten these down. And I gotta fix that bolt, so we'll be back again. All right, well, some good news. I found a Ford bolt that is going to work for this. So we're gonna put this up in here. We're gonna try to. No, I'm an idiot. We're gonna undo the bolt back here. I feel stupid. Pop that bolt out. So, first thing first, shove this one up into here. Then you can get the other one back in. Ugh. go we're gonna put the bolt through this time Let's sort of aim get this a little bit of course I don't uh, I don't really have anything to pry with I don't have a flathead nothing over here let's go grab something I'm gonna make this go that way so the bolt went through the other way but now we're going to make this more make more sense and go through this way because that is just stupid. We're gonna tap, a tap, tap that bolt through. More than enough threads and we are gonna coat the crap out of this thing with fluid film. Now, the other side. Wrap that up into place. Yeah, the... Seems like the diff did move back slightly. There we go. So now that all these are in place, <laughs> that's the light letting me know we're almost out of power. But now that we got all that done, what size we got here? 18 milli. 18 millimeter and that nut, if I'm not mistaken, is a 21 millimeter. So we're gonna hold it with the wrench and tighten it up with the 18 millimeter. Impact gun here, forward, wrench back here, holding the nut. Maybe do, but there we go. Now spray that down, spray in there, spray that bolt. Make sure that's covered. Now for the other side, which I think you saw you saw me do before, you're just gonna do the same thing, tighten it up, and you'll be good to go. And then now we're gonna do the top one which is a little bit more difficult to get to. So now we're on the upper control arm, frontward facing, and 
the back bolt, I was able to get a 17 millimeter on after I cleaned it up. So we're back in here, we're gonna find the bolt again and pop that on there fully. And then we're gonna undo the nut, which is an 18 millimeter. There we go. Now we're gonna give this a tappy tap tap. And I'm not surprised that's like that. Again, the vehicle is on. It is a very long bolt. And it definitely is fighting. I think it's the rear end that's fighting, actually. I wonder what happens if we take that 17 millimeter. Huh. 17 milli go. What am I doing? I don't know. Where's that 17 mil or so millimeter socket go? Let's just use this one, I guess. I'm not gonna get underneath the vehicle. Yeah, that is just like dangling there. This one doesn't want to come out. There, got it out. Let's see if we get. Yeah, that bolt still is playing. Oh, that 17 millimeter went all the way over there, all the way to the other side of the vehicle. This bolt. Make sure the weight of the vehicle is definitely, yeah, it's definitely on that. Ah. Start tapping it through some more. That was the bolt. Now we gotta see if we can get this out. the axle doing something stupid. There we go. A lot of tension on that. Let's go grab that. So for the rearward facing mount, you're looking at a 15 millimeter bolt and a 17 millimeter nut. Um, and that'll go ahead and break free. I already did it. It's kind of hard to film in there anyways. Let's get you in there, there, and then the bolt. Oh, I put the nut back on it. There we go. And the bolt will just... <laughs> ah, the spring's in the friggin' way. Shoot. Ah, one second. There we go.
So now we're going to take the new one, slide it up in there first, I think, and then bring it up and down and here. It's always easier said than done with new parts. I think I'm going to have to get a hammer to hammer that down in there because it's just not just going like it should. So I did get the upper and lower control arms in. Uh, what I did do is I turned the bolts around so the bolts are going through, the nuts are on the other side. I fluid filmed everything just in case it all has to come back out and I did tighten them up um, when they were on uh, their weight, um, not sprung up in the air. Um, for the top one, we need to, I need to show you. So, for the upper control arm on the top side, you want to make sure that this end goes in the axle and this end goes on the body. There is a difference. It will not, f like this side will fit on the body side, but this side will not fit on the axle side. So again, this side, which is different, goes in the, like it's, see how it's just flat? goes in the axle side. This side, which has like a little bit of a lip, bigger lip, it's beveled out, um, goes on the body side. Um, so that's the thing I want to show you. video but hopefully it gives you an idea of how to do your rear upper and lower control arms and replace your fuel tank. Um, I am going to be purchasing like I said a new fuel tank holder. Um, I can't live with that one. Um, of course you connected your two um, lines in the front of the tank, your return and your deliver lines. You have two lines in the back here. You have your you have a larger evap, um, a pressure hose, I believe, um, and then your fuel filler neck, and then you have your electrical connection that connects to the body of the car. Um, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Um, leave a comment. I get back to everybody when I do the fuel tank strap, fuel tank holder. That'll probably be a more intensive video. Um, a little bit more helpful now that I've done it. Um, this job is a lot easier if you have a lift, <laughs> I'd have to say, and if you have a friend. I did this all on my own and tried to film. It was a little difficult. Um, clean your tools off, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.